What's up everybody and welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. Today we want to talk a little bit about genetics and the role genetics play in bodybuilding, figure, fitness, etc, etc. And let me just start off by saying in these sports, in all sports in general, genetics are huge. It's super important. They're mega important. Okay, without the proper genetics, you're not going to be able to excel at the sport that you want to excel in. Plain and simple. Okay, so let's start with what are good genetics for, you know, the sport of bodybuilding, etc. Well, you want to have good bone structure. That's the first thing. If you're not born with the right bone structure, even if you maximize your physique to its potential, you're still not going to beat the guys that have maximized their physique and also have the genetic bone structure. But what do I mean by that? Wide shoulders, small waist, narrow hips, um, the length of your legs, the, uh, the, the size of your wrists, whether you have small wrists or large wrists. All these things come into play with whether or not you know you have that genetic bone structure. Second of all, the way the muscle system is set up, muscle fiber types. Now, some people can get bigger than others. Some people will never gain the size, and that is all genetic. You can train. I know, I know people that are 25, 30 years of training in, in competition shape, in good shape. They're still 130 something pounds. I mean, that's a band of weight. That's why they have those weight classes. So you got to be aware that if um. If you don't have the genetics, you're not going to go from a bantamweight to a super heavyweight. Now, Dexter Jackson, here's a guy who competed as a bantamweight and now competes as a super heavyweight. He's the only one in the IFBB, the only one that started at the bottom and has gone all the way up to super heavyweight from that bottom weight class. So obviously, if you know genetics didn't play a role, all these late, all these uh, excuse me, bantamweights would be able to get to super heavyweights, but that's not that doesn't happen. Okay, he's the only one. So. Let me tell you guys a little story about how I finally realized how much a role genetics played in bodybuilding. So the whole time I've been training, I mean, I'm a fairly decent sized guy, 240 pounds at 5 foot 10. I train pretty hard. I've had a 500 pound bench press at 21 years old and I weigh 270 pounds. Uh, it's safe to say that I could pack on mass pretty decent. Now, my training partner, that when we were growing up, we were both teenagers competing in the teen division and he would always be a little bit bigger than me. He was about 10 pounds heavier than me on stage, so he had 10 more pounds of muscle than I normally had, plain and simple. So at this point now, we're past our teenage years, and we both decided we want to use steroids. Now, this is going back a long time ago because we had just been out of our, so we were like 21 years old. And now we both go on the same cycle. We're both doing the same training. We're both pretty much eating the same, except I blew past him and got up to, I went from 155 pounds roughly to 230 pounds in 12 weeks. Yes. That's how much weight I gained. It was like 50, almost 60 pounds in, if it was 50, no, it was about 65 pounds roughly that I'd put on in that 12 weeks. He had gained almost 18, 19 pounds. So it, obviously there was something going on and I wasn't doing anything different than him, but my genetics were to be able to absorb and use those drugs better than his was. It wasn't that he, I was training harder than him or wasn't that I was doing anything better than him. My body used, utilized those drugs and the food differently together than his. So it fast forward through the whole time that we were training and competing and stuff together that he never got above 230 pounds. He always stayed around 220, 225. Another instance is I had a, a, a guy at the gym that I've known for a long time and this guy would take boatloads. I mean, he would take more shit than some of the Olympians would take. And he never broke like 200 pounds. In shape, I think, he, honestly, on stage, I think he was about 158 pounds. With all the growth hormone and insulin, all the blood. He almost killed himself with insulin several times. Because his genetic structure didn't allow him to carry the muscle for whatever reason. I mean, his body didn't utilize the drugs, and that's genetic. And he couldn't train heavy. He was weak still. And, you know, he didn't have an appetite. Everything boiled down to genetics to the point where, you know, everything he did was in vain because nothing worked. And it was crazy because he would try so hard and nothing would happen. So it wasn't to the fact that he was failing because he wasn't trying hard. His body just didn't want to do it. And that's why they created men's physique because it doesn't matter who you are. If you don't have the genetics, you're not going to build that size and that mass. It's just not going to happen, okay? Again, a big, big part of what made me realize how important genetics are is my good friend Kevin Lavroni. Now you guys know Kevin for being the genetic freak and he really is that genetic freak, it's not a joke. And let's go to a little quick story time during my 3 Raw TV. 
Kevin decides to make his first transformation, which I was a part of. I'm actually in the video with him doing the bench press. Hadn't been to a gym to train in like eight years, okay? Walks in, benches 315 off the bat, raw, not even thinking. He just wanted to try 225 that day and see how it would work out. And so he benches 315. Now, immediately following this workout, we go across the street to the Chinese restaurant and we order chicken and rice and broccoli. We're eating, we're basically feasting on chicken, rice, and broccoli. And, you know, we're talking over different things that we're going to do for the website that we own for different like workouts and stuff, how he's going to progress in his transformations. And we leave the restaurant. Everything's good. That night later on, I'm like, oh, my stomach's a little bloated. Oh, I don't feel so good. We both got food poisoning from the friggin' chicken. So now two days of throwing up and diarrhea and... Kevin comes back to the gym three pounds heavier. Me, I'm six pounds lighter for throwing up a diarrhea. His genetics do not, if he doesn't want to keep the muscle on his body, he has to eat one meal a day, and then his body only goes down to like 210. So genetics don't allow him to lose the muscle, whereas, you know, my genetics will lose muscle like that if I'm not eating. I need to eat, I need to make sure I get all my meals in, I need to make sure I'm in the gym. If I take, you know, one day where I'm not eating the, the right amount of meals, my weight goes down like that and it's off so genetics play a huge role but if you don't have the best genetics in the world to become a pro does that mean you should give up on your dreams and stop training and throw everything away no of course not because if you push as hard as you want to try to get to or as hard as you possibly can to try to get to the mr olympia level and you never get to the mr olympia level you will still get to a level that you never thought you would so always put your chin down eyes up Push forward, keep going forward, try to accomplish every goal you can possibly can, and who knows, along the way you may actually accomplish some stuff that you didn't even think you ever could. Bios3 training at gmail.com. The blog is www.bios3.com, training.com, excuse me, and we're out.